It's Vancouver's podcast on the Canada's Podcast Network. Joanne Marlowe is an educator, trainer, public speaker, professional life coach, and best-selling published author of over 15 books and articles. Joanne is a thought leader in creating highly productive, multi-generational teams. She's an advisor to upper management and their teams by assessing the issues within the culture and efficiency of the organization and assisting in the implementation of appropriate solutions and systems. Well, Joanne, welcome to the show. Thanks for taking the time today to be here for all our listeners. Thanks, Robert. It's my pleasure. Fantastic. Okay, I want you to tell us a little bit more about yourself, where you're from, and give us the details on your current business. Okay, well, um, the short version is um, I was born in Quebec, just south of Montreal, and moved um, out here and grew up in Coquitlam and then spent most of my adult life in North Vancouver. Um, My business background, well, I've got a degree in economics and commerce, and that was always pretty weird because in those days, I was one of four women in a class of 75, so... Um, I've always been sort of um, not really ordinary as far as I'm concerned and started to take a look at what, what, I, what options I had when I um, wanted to develop a career. And um, I'm a baby boomer and I'm still working and love it, but Back then, you know, women were considered nurses, secretaries, that kind of stuff, and teachers. And I wanted to go and, um, you know, hit the moon kind of thing. So that that really wasn't an option in those days, which made me very frustrated. I did go into marketing research and um, re- demanded a salary the same as my male colleagues. So I knew that I had that kind of potential, but... I did go into teaching and found that I loved it, and I wrote my first book when I was 22, and that sort of started me on my way. I always wanted to teach kids, and these were grade 12s, how to survive after school, after they finished their education, and I taught for a number of years. Uh, did some leadership positions within the school district, um, wrote curricula all the way through. I wrote three published books um, uh, while I was still teaching. And um, what I've done now, I have retired from teaching um, in the public system. I taught at SFU for uh, about three or four years and started to realize that the world has changed. It's no longer, thank goodness, the same as it was when I was growing up. And um, I took interest in looking at all of the various generations. And now there are five working generations in in the workplace, some of them working all together. And they all have attitudes about each other and judgments about each other and biases. And that creates a lot of chaos in communication, in turnover, you know, managers who are set in their ways and maybe an older generation will look at the younger generations and say, you know, they don't have the same ethic or they work ethic and that kind of thing. So I've been studying the multiple generations for about 10 years, done a ton of research and um, decided to take all of my skills and combine the, the ones I love the most. And now I've developed systems for engaging teams, and uh, that's what I'm offering to businesses. So I'll answer more questions a little later, but what I love to do is solve problems more than anything. I just, I feel like a funnel and where someone who might be a frustrated manager and they just sort of dump on me, uh, <laughs> they'll dump into the funnel and I will spit out the core issue or problem and then come up with creative solutions that they can consider. And then ideally, um, I'll guide them through an implementation process and watch them until they've finished implementing the whole thing. So that's my business now. Okay. Did you need financing to start your company? And how do you currently make money in your business now? Well, um, 
I uh, I used the bank of Joanne. So, um, you know, I it, it doesn't take a lot of money to research and that kind of thing. So I did, um, I am well educated, so that cost me a lot of money. Um, I've invested in myself. And, um, but it's, <clears throat> you know, along the way I've been able to earn and, and put some of those earnings into financing what I'd like to do. Um, and as far as, um, what was the, the last part of that question? I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, yeah, I just was uh, asking how you finance your company and how you currently make money in your business now. Is it through consulting? Is it speaking yeah. engagements, books? Um, all three of those, actually. Um, my latest book was published this past June. And so I, I'm not expecting to make a ton of money on that. It's more or less a, a big business card and um, adds to the credibility that I know what I'm talking about. But I do consult, and um, I charge for my time, and um, I also do presentations and workshops. So uh, right now I'm doing um, one of the analysis and, and the, um, for a client, as well as I've been uh, hired to do a, um, a tailored program for a group of general managers in Vancouver. So looking forward to doing that. Okay. What is the long-term vision and what will your company look like in the future? Do you see the company expanding into other areas and where beyond Vancouver, BC, or even Canada? Well, you know, we're in a global situation. I think um, I'm not great at speaking other languages. I kind of regret that, but um, I certainly see right now I'm pretty much... Um, in British Columbia, uh, with some some of my webinars, I've gone across Canada in HR um, fields. Uh, I can certainly see that because I've, the material I've researched uh, is both Canadian and um, American. You know, it it serves both areas. But I've also through LinkedIn, I've I've hooked up with a lot of um, international organizations asking them lots of questions about um, what it's like to have different generations. And they are all different. So um, I think what I can offer is just some new new ideas with a new set of ears and eyes. Okay. Well, we have a lot of international listeners as well. So I want you to answer their question with their their thoughts in mind. What are the biggest benefits for you being an entrepreneur here in Vancouver, BC? I want you to give us some of the good points about starting a company here, but I also want you to give us some of the tough things or challenges for our listeners so they can keep an eye out for them. Yes. Um, you know, people who are entering the Vancouver market um, will find that, well, what I've found is um, it's very casual here. You know, if you look at cities like New York or Toronto, Montreal, and um, they're much more focused, I think, dog-eat-dog dog kind of <laughs> thoughts, and, and Vancouver's a little more laid back um, in pursuing things, you know, that I know that just from the fact that I've mentored a lot of graduates from university and uh, young people in entrepreneurial programs, um, there, I just sort of see that something may be lacking. The enthusiasm is there, but the research, the detail that they need to really go into um, is a little lax. So you know, when I look at Vancouver, number one, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. We are so mosaic. I love that about Vancouver. Um, we're not an enormous population, but we're certainly not tiny by any means. Um, there's a huge population of business um, entrepreneurs in BC and small businesses. And so there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of people not making a ton of money, even though they'd like to. And it's just maybe the way they, they're operating their business um, or they're new to it. 
So, yeah, if, if a person's coming to Vancouver, they're definitely going to see, see the fact that they have to be able to um, tailor their needs to their very specific clientele. And, and um, it's very expensive to live here, too. You know, I've been a native of Vancouver for a long time, but I moved up north for five years. And when I came back, I was shocked. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm, st I'm still a little shocked. It would be lovely to, you know, own a big place, but I don't. So um, business is, um, is good, but it can always get better. Great. Okay, we do some of our best work outside the office. Is there a place in the lower mainland close to where you live or work where you like to go recharge or get inspired or just think about your business? And does it change with the season considering all the rain we get here? Mm -hmm. That's a good question um, and easy for me to answer. Actually, there's a special beach in West Vancouver, and strangely enough, I didn't know this until a little while ago, but it's called Millennial Beach. <laughs> and it's in West Vancouver. It connects the the seawall from uh, uh, east to, or I guess north and west. Um, sometimes I'll just go and pick up a wonderful coffee and sit on a bench or sit on a log, and I will think or read or create um, all kinds of neat ideas, or I'll problem solve. Something about the waves, the smell of the ocean, the seaweed, and usually there's seagulls floating around. I just go into a totally different world um, at, a, at a beach. And it doesn't matter whether the sun is out or whether it's cloudy. I'll just bundle up and just uh, love to, uh, you know, have that wonderful, wonderful air. The other place that I get that I have gone to as well when I wrote one of my books I actually went to Whistler and um, I probably wrote about 80 or 90 pages over a period of two days when I was up at Whistler I was just cuddled up in this wonderful condo and had the fire going and when I got tired of writing I'd go for a wonderful walk in the snow and just breathe natural air. So definitely the the nature of, of Vancouver, greater Vancouver is amazing. Great. Okay. Well, you've lived here for quite some time. So you originally came from Quebec, correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I want you to imagine that you're starting all over again and you just moved here to Vancouver, BC, but this time you don't know anyone. What would you do and how would you go about starting all over again as an entrepreneur? Well, recently I've been to a couple of workshops and they have, even though I've been doing, uh, having my own business for a while, I think it never hurts to really get focused. Um, I think finding, really having a system on how to determine your niche and, um, and identifying that ideal client before you do absolutely anything is key and I'm a thought leader that just means that I think I do a lot of things really well and I you know I have sort of the shiny object syndrome so I have to really really focus on not just what I'm I good at but what do I love doing and what results do I want my clients to have? Because that's when I see their, the light in their eyes, that, that excites me. Okay. Now, what does the first hour look like for you when you get up in the morning? Do you have a specific routine or a ritual that helps you, helps you get motivated to start the day? Uh, coffee. <laughs> Um, I just make a cup, of, a great cup of coffee, but and then I, I'll I'll sit and I'll listen to about a ten minute meditation that just takes me through the day to help me get focused. Is that Headspace? No, um, I'm a, a master practitioner in NLP, neuro linguistics programming, and so it's one of the guided um, meditations from that practice. Okay, and. Um, <clears throat> I do a, a fair amount of stretching as well, 
And, you know, I, I don't often leave my office, my home office, um, early in the morning. So unless I'm networking, so, you know, s- stretching is a great way. And then partway through the, the day, I'll go for a walk. Okay. Do you think entrepreneurs have to be weird or unique in a positive way or are wired differently? <laughs> I honestly think they are wired differently. I don't think they're weird. I, I think they just have a totally different mindset. Uh, they're usually very, very creative. They're um, gung-ho. They have a, a desire to be their own boss. Even when I was teaching high school, I always forewarned the principal and I said, I'm not your normal teacher, at least not in my opinion. Um, I said, you, you will see me standing on a desk doing brain exercises. You will see me sitting in the hallway while the students figure out what the key to the lesson is and um, through experiencing. Um, I always work during the summer in business so that I could teach current business to, to my students. And I just hated doing the ordinary. Um, I, I watched my father work for the same company for over 35 years, and I just shook my head. I, I could not understand how anybody could stay with the same company for five to seven years or, or more. Um, so I, I gave myself a range. I've always had an entrepreneurial mind, and when I applied for jobs, even as a teenager, that's what I told them. I said, I have an entrepreneurial mindset. Um, I will think of things to do. I will look around and get things done. Okay. What books are you reading now and why, or even audio books, and can you recommend any books for our listeners who are also aspiring entrepreneurs? Well, um, I've read a lot of books, and I have a little library stash, but right now um, I'm preparing, um, um, excuse me, a a course for a, a group that are really unique in their thinking and they, they want me to discuss that it's okay to be different. So one of my mentors all through my life, ever since I was just a little kid actually, was Walt Disney. And so currently I'm reading a book called Disney University. Um, I'm sorry, I I, I don't know the author, but, um, and then Creating Magic is another one, Common Sense Leadership Skills, and that's by Lee Cockerell, and that's that's a Disney um, book as well. Um, I'm just fascinated by the mindset, the, the values that Disney instilled and all the people who worked with him you know, followed his leadership. And then um, there's one other book that I'm, I've, I read a little while ago, but I've picked it up again recently. It's called The Power of Focus. And that's by Les Hewitt from Calgary and Jack Canfield. So those, those three books are the ones that are on my mind right now. Any online or offline tools that you like to use on a daily basis? Uh, LinkedIn, for sure. Um, I I visit LinkedIn on a regular basis just to see who's out there, who's checking out my profile and um, whether we have something in common, that kind of thing. It's a way of me reaching out and networking as well. Um, I also go on discussion groups and put in my two cents worth. And and I've had people even as far away as Greece um, contact me saying, I really liked your comment about us and chats. So it's, it's, um, I, I very much like LinkedIn. Zoom is something I'm starting to use on a regular basis because some of my clients are um, in Alberta and other provinces. And that's going to be a great tool where you can actually have a whole conference right in front of you and see their pictures get, you know, really create a relationship. Um, the old paper and pen kind of thing. Um, I have a number of journals, and they're all titled for, you know, whatever use I have. But when I'm thinking and processing, I 
I like making a big mess. I'll do a, a mind map, and then I'll take the mind map and I'll f- fine tune it even more. So one of the one of the key areas of that mind map, I'll I'll take that out and expand that. Um, one of the methods that I've used when I'm problem solving for corporations and also for writing my books. Um, I use colored post-its on a huge wall or a a large whiteboard. And um, so I'll have the titles going across or the symptoms or whatever it might be of the problems going across. And then I start looking at what solutions, what are things, you know, is it a symptom or is that a cause or what what it just might be. So um, that has been instrumental in me problem solving. So those are sort of some of the tools I use. Okay. Well, you mentioned earlier how beautiful Vancouver is and a great city to live in. And we've got so many activities that you can do here, summertime, winter, you name it. How do you balance work and how do you relax and not even think about work? And what are your favorite activities to do here in BC? Do you ski? Do you bike, kayak, golf, hike, or simply go for a drive? Uh, well, I would like to do a lot of those things. Um, um, my my body is telling me I can't s- ski and do a whole lot of rigorous activity anymore, but I love to walk. And um, as I mentioned, on the beach or up at Whistler, I socialize a fair amount. Um, I love um, the artistic things like musicals and plays and just going and listening to a, a band one night at a at a restaurant. Um, I also sing. Um, I don't know whether it's very well or not, but I'm in a, in a choir and that's fun. And I, um, I love doing, um, really fun stuff like skydiving and, um, parasailing. So I like the thrill of, of, and, uh, of those kinds of activities. So that certainly takes away the work. <laughs> okay. If you weren't doing now, if you weren't doing what you do now, what would you like to do for a bit, a profession? Well, probably it's always been a dream of mine to be in improv or acting. Um, I've never gone into that, but it, the whole idea of going into an improv class is, is really exciting to me. Okay. Uh, yeah. That sounds interesting. What kind of a job would you not like to do? Couldn't, oh, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Um, anything that involved routine or a lot of rules. I'm such a rule breaker. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't do anything illegal, but um, I'll put up a fight if I don't think that the rule is necessary for a particular solution. So I bet. So, yeah, routine work. Um, oh, and anything dealing with uh, a lot of finances. I learned in a management position that was once very, very creative, um, and I was writing curricula and teaching. It was fabulous, and all of a sudden, I was managing two divisions, and the whole thing became um, strategic plans and budgets and profit margins, and I thought... Oh my gosh. So yeah, I, it's not my strength. I can do it, but it's not, not fun for me. In business, what is your favorite word, quote, or sentence that you like to use? Mm. I think, uh, hmm. imagine. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, I like being curious about things or when I'm talking to clients I'll say you know if they say I I will imagine it could be or what would it be like if you could imagine blah 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 and all of a sudden that opens a door for for me as well as other people and I have a big sign on my wall that says imagine so it was probably a little bit of Disney in there, but that's definitely in there. What is your least favorite word or sentence you do not like to hear? Oh, I'll try. Um, 
that just means I'm not doing it. Okay. You know, when someone says, well, I'll try and get it done on time or I'll try and do my best or I'll try and make it to your party. It, I just scratch them off the list. If you had to pick one or two words to describe yourself, what would it be and why? Mm. Well, um, inspirational leader. Okay. So, and and why? Um, I see myself as a leader more than a manager. I come up with creative ideas. They just float out of nowhere into my head and out of my mouth. I don't have to think about them sometimes, but um, I've been told I have a wonderful way of inspiring people to think way beyond what they ever thought they could do. And as a leader, I, I envision myself with this in a big jungle with a machete in one hand, knocking down all the debris and bushes and making a huge path. And then in my other hand, I've got this big lantern. So I'm leading the way and creating a path so that people can do what they best can do. And, you know, I, I always think of leaders that way, that if, if they get rid of all the challenges that are in everybody's way, then people can just do their jobs to the best of their ability and productivity starts to soar and culture starts to really improve. So, yeah, I agree with that one. You know, it's the positive. I think sometimes, you know, if you're working, your boss is being negative, it's not going to help. It's, it's, to, right. <laughs> you know, it's to be positive. What keeps you up at night, if anything? Um, that I, uh, that I'm not focused um, that I've got too many things on my mind, not, not things that bother me, just the fact that, oh, I could do this, oh, I could do that, and, and then there's this and that. Um, other than that, um, I sleep pretty well at night. <laughs> okay. I want you to give us the top three things on your inspired life list. This could be travel more, TEDx talks, philanthropy, write more books, anything like that? Well, I am going to write another book. Um, that first book that I mentioned that I wrote when I was 22 on, um, um, you know, how to, how to survive adulthood when you finished your education kind of thing. Um, I want to resurrect that and write a book for, um, Gen Zs and, and Gen Ys. Um, those are the people who are typically 16 to 26 years of age, although millennials are older than that. They go up to 37 right now. But that younger age group are really appear to be confused on what they want to do when they grow up. And a lot of adults are like that, too. <laughs> but, um, you know, over and over again, I've seen students who will graduate in certain genres and then have no idea how they can use their skills. Or even in an interview, they don't even know what they what their strengths are. So um, I don't know if it'll be a book, but it'll definitely be an online course with templates on how to do a resume, different questions to, they need to ask during an interview, um, finding out their strengths, all that kind of stuff, um, how to have relationships, how, how to sign a lease for your first apartment, really good stuff like that. So um, how, to, uh, how to appropriately uh, act at a job and how to actually last more than six months in a job. So that's my next book or, or writing piece. I definitely would love to travel. Um, I like cruising. And, um, you know, those are, I'd like to go to Australia and New Zealand. I'd love to go on a really fast speedboat through caves. <laughs> So those are a few things I'd like to do. Would you be driving that boat? Uh, no. No, um, I, I definitely would not be driving the boat. But I have been on, in whitewater rafting, and I've been on the bullnose. So I um, scared everybody else in the boat by being there. But um, I like the rush. Thrill seeker. 
I am a thrill seeker. <laughs> okay. Do you have any advice that you may have received that you can pass on to entrepreneurs throughout BC? That I've received. <clears throat> Has anyone mm -hmm. ever told you something? Wow, I gotta remember that. I'm gonna, I remember that. And pass that on one day. Uh, I think the the best thing that people can do is to really get to know themselves. Um, it really doesn't matter what other people say, because you know we're born absolutely perfect, and then life happens, and we collect all kinds of debris and dust and twigs and. Here we are, this beautiful painting when we're born, and it becomes smothered in dust and dirt and uh, as, we, as we get older. But if you know really and truly who you are and what your strengths are and how you shine individually, it's really easy to self-clean that, <laughs> that painting of all the debris. Um, your confidence will soar. It, try out all kinds of things. Experiment. Um, in volunteering, um, when you're really young, in your teens, get a job. Um, be responsible. Be accountable. Um, see how your strengths can best serve others. Um, yeah, I think that. Okay. Okay, Joanne, are you ready to have some fun? Oh, I'm, I'm already having fun, but oh. sure. Okay. Well, as you know, entrepreneurs are very busy people, always on the go, whether you're traveling or speaking with clients or suppliers, you name it, you are always on the go and doing things. But we're going to take you away from all that. There's a small tropical island just off of Fiji that only has one phone booth there. There is no internet. This place actually does exist. We're going to drop you off there, and you won't have a computer or a smartphone or a tablet. You can use the phone booth located there anytime to call the boat, We'll come pick you up. How long would you last before you made that call? And what would you do while you were there? Uh, well, you caught me at a time where I would love to have a vacation. And I am a water baby. So um, I would probably love just walking on the beach, swimming, snorkeling, fishing. I would read I would definitely mind map and start my new program for Gen Ys and, uh, and Zs. Um, I could probably, and, and I would, if it's a tropical island, no doubt they have great food, fresh fruit and fish and all that kind of stuff. So I'd probably last four to six months before I'd use that phone. <laughs> wow. That boat's going to yeah. be sitting out there for a while. It would be. <laughs> Great. Okay, how can our listeners get hold of you? And is there anything you'd like to add before you leave us today? Oh, well, this has been a treat for me, um, just speaking with you. I really appreciate it. Um, people can get hold of me. I have a website. It's systemsforengagingteams.com. And my email address is the same, only it's got Joanne at systems for engaging teams.com and um, I'm happy to support people um, in fact any of your listeners who would like to contact me uh, I'd love to invite them for a, a half an hour strategy call and if they've got an issue with multiple generations or they don't like their boss or their manager or they don't like their young employees or the, one of the biggest problems that is happening right now is turnover costs are astronomical and just leaking money and profits out of the companies. And I, I did um, just a simple calculation of how much it actually costs a company who's hiring a just perhaps a, a retail clerk or um, a restaurant server, minimum wage earner. If they were having to um, replace that minimum wage earner and retrain someone, find someone and then retrain them, it would be at least $5,100 to replace that one person. Wow. You know that much. Or if, it is, uh, if you're an executive level, could you imagine what that costs? 
Um, yes, you can almost look at, um, uh, <laughs> well, I always, to be safe, say it's three months salary, but if they're a high executive level, you're looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars. Incredible. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you for coming on the show. I've learned a lot about you, and I'm sure our listeners have as well. Well, thanks, Robert. This has been fun, and um, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it and hope that um, some of the things I've said have been valu valuable to your listeners. Great. Okay. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Joanne. Uh, All right. Thanks, Robert. Bye-bye.